let's say that we have a y equals to 10 sine 1 half x. Okay, so if we're looking at our y equals to c plus or minus a sine kx. Well, do we even have a C in this one? Mm -hmm. We don't. So that means there's no shifting up or down. Okay. Well, we do have an A though, right? Mm -hmm. And what is that? Mm -hmm. 10. So we would look at this as the absolute <coughs> value of 10. So that means that our graph will oscillate up and down between here zero, 10, and negative 10. Okay? All right, now, the 1 half, that's what? Our K, right. So therefore, our period would be 2 pi over K, right? Which would be 2 pi over one half, and so just like with that A over B analogy, remember that? <coughs> equals to A divided by B equals to A times the reciprocal of B. We would take 2 pi times the reciprocal of 1 half, which would be what? 2. two. And so our period is 4 pi. Mm -hmm. So you see, with when you get that k between 0 and 1, you get a fraction for k. And so that will be flipped and multiplied. And so that actually stretches our graph. So, just y equals to sine x, right? We have zero to, to two pi, right? And here we have pi over two, and here's pi, and uh, three pi over two, and two pi, right? But now, we're asked, and this would be between one and negative one here. But now we're oscillating between 10 and negative 10, right? And our period is not gonna end at two pi, our period ends where? At four pi. So, you get that horizontal stretching. Well, what are these other points here? Four in the middle would be two pi. That's right. It, th yeah, this one would be two pi. But how do we figure that out? Well, just take just take our original <coughs> increments of zero pi over two pi three pi over two and two pi and multiply the denominators by k. So if this is one over one, and this is over one, and this is over one. We multiply all the denominators times k. Well, we know k is what? One half, one half right? <coughs> so, zero, of course, zero <coughs> over one half is just zero. And then this would be pi over two times one half. So that would be not pi over two, but now it's, we can just say, okay, these two cancel and we just get what? <coughs> pi. Pi plus. Okay, now here we have pi over, okay, we said it was one half, right? So we flip and multiply the denominator, and we get what? 2 pi. And now, 
k we said was 1 half, so this is 3 pi over 2 times 1 half. So now the 2's cancel right here. And so we end up with what? 3, three pi. And then, yeah, this would be 2 pi over 1 half. And we would multiply and multiply, and we get 4 pi, right? Which is what we calculated up here. So it checks. Okay? And so this confirms what we originally knew was our period. So here, we're still at zero, and then instead of pi over two, now we're at pi. Instead of at pi for our original graph, right? Now we're at two pi, okay? And now instead of at three pi over two here, we're at what? Three pi. Three pi. <coughs> and then instead of two pi, we're at four pi, okay? So you see how originally, if this is 2 pi here, in our original graph, did that, you see how that vert, that horizontally stretched the graph, having k at 1 half. Okay? So this is our original graph. Okay? So it helps to, to start off with a rich, the original graph and then build from there. Okay? Any questions with that?